Uh, the exams are almost done. I have talked to the TAs and I've given them my opinion about the fact that it's not done. Uh, and I'm going to keep talking until it's done. Uh, that's, I apologize. Uh, they were busy in the lab. Uh, I'm probably getting in trouble for saying that on camera, but oh well. Everyone's busy in the lab. Okay, so that was unprofessional, but how apologize to the TAs. Uh, so, in general, on Friday we talked about nucleophilic acyl substitution. Alright, in nucleophilic acyl substitution, we have a nucleophile. That's going to add into a carbonyl. And that's going to give us a tetrahedral intermediate. Like so. All right, and now these electrons can kick down, even kicking, either kicking off the nucleophile to give us a leaving group back, or kicking off the nucleophile, or kicking off the leaving group to give us a product. So this reaction is the definition of reversible. All right, and so there's, gonna be, there's always going to be an equilibrium with this chemistry. The thing that determines the equilibrium, and this was a big sticking point on Friday, is the differences in pKa between the leaving group and the nucleophile. And, the leave, and to give you a general role with the nucleophilic acyl substitution, is the equilibrium is going to lie on the side of the stronger base, i.e. higher pKa of its conjugate acid, forming a bond to the carbonyl, and the weaker base, aka lower pKa uh, conjugate acid, being the group that's kicked off. So the stronger base, the equilibrium is going to side on the, it's going to side with the stronger base now being part of the carbonyl, so being bound to the acyl carbon, and the weaker base, i.e. stronger acid of its conjugate acid, swimming around in solution. And so here, let me give you a quick way to explain this, inter this uh, equilibrium without drawing the mechanism. And because in some of these mechanisms there are proton transfers, and proton transfers can kind of throw a wrench into this pure analysis of pKa's. But again, you just want to think of the pKa's of the conjugate acid or conjugate bases. So here's a classic example which I probably should have led with. Acid chloride. versus a carboxylate is going to give us, so the carboxylate is going to add in, give us a tetrahedral intermediate, which is going to then fall down, kicking out the leaving group. And so chemists normally don't draw the tetrahedral intermediate, because it's something that's so common and mundane you know, and it's another intermediate that takes more time to draw. That chemists would normally just draw a nucleophile adding one arrow for the electrons kicking up to give us the tetrahedral intermediate, a second arrow, tetrahedral uh, intermediate collapsing, kicking up the leaving group. So this really is the entire mechanism of a nucleophilic acyl substitution. hydride plus CO minus. So 
the best way, as I kind of did here, to predict the equilibrium is to look at the group that's on the acyl group in the starting material and to look at the group that's on the acyl group in the product. And realize that the equilibrium's going to favor the side where the stronger base has formed the bond with the aso group, and the weaker base has left and is swimming around. And so the way you to think of, about this is, if you're a stronger base, staring to the side, you're probably the stronger nucleophile, because basicity is a measure in one essence of how high in energy your lone pair of electrons are in the conjugate base. So the higher energy your lone pair of electrons are, the stronger the base you are. But if your lone pair of electrons are basic and then high energy, well guess what, they're also nucleophilic. So in generally, in, in, in generally there's a fairly strong correlation between basicity and uh, nucleophilicity. Sterics changes things. And you should remember that in Chem 232 when we're talking about SN2 chemistry. So sterics can play a role for sure. But sterics aside, steric hindrance aside, if you're a strong base, you're likely to be a good nucleophile, a better nucleophile. And so when you take two things and you compare them directly, odds are the stronger base is going to be the stronger nucleophile. And just let me show you here. So in this mechanism, the carboxylate adds cover, gives us a tetrahedral order in which collapses, and gives us an hydrate and a CL minus. And so now we can just we can say what the pKa's of each thing is. So in the first one, we have a CL bound to an acyl group. So CL, its conjugate acid is HCl, and HCl has a sub-zero pKa, right? HCl is very acidic. So then what you do is say, all right. This leaving group equals CL, HCL has a pKa of sub-zero. Now we can look at this, and this in the product, the thing bound now is a, uh, a you know, comes from a carboxylate, which comes from a carbo carboxylic acid. And the pKa of a carboxylic acid is about 4.5. And so the equilibrium is going to lie on the side of the stronger base being part of the acyl group, the spider nucleophile being part of the acyl group. So in this case, zero, sub zero versus 4.5, the stronger base is going to be the conjugate base of this, which is carboxylate. So the equilibrium is going to lie on the side of the carboxylate adding in to give us this. So the stronger base is likely going to be the stronger nucleophile, and the stronger nucleophile being part, forming the bond of the acyl group is going to be the favored product in the equilibrium. And so let me put it this way. <coughs> For this reverse reaction, where Cl- adds into the anhydride that gives an acid chloride and a, uh, and a carboxylate, well, the carboxylate is a stronger nucleophile. So even if this did form, if we form the carboxylate, which is just going to add in and give us this. So that kind of explains how, these hydrogen, how pKa can help us predict these equilibrium constants, in that pKa's help us predict what the stronger nucleophile is. And the equilibrium is going to always lie towards the stronger nucleophile being incorporated into the acyl group, and the weaker nucleophile being kicked off as a leaving group and swimming around. Does that give clarification from Friday's lecture? Okay, thumbs up, thumbs down. Good, thank you. All right. So, great. And so, now let's talk about, so I, I should have led with this example. This example is more clear, right? Now let me go back to do some damage control and talk about the example that I think caused a lot of interplay between us on Friday. And it was good interplay. 
I, 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 it was great, right? It's learning moments. You can't engineer learning moments. At least I can't yet. But let's do, uh, green's not a good color. <coughs> so we have an acid chloride. And we have an amine. In this case, it's a secondary amine. But as long as we have a primary or a secondary or ammonia, nothing's going to change. Tertiary, tertiary amines won't do anything. But primary and secondary and ammonia will do this. So we have an amine that has at least one hydrogen attached to it. And that will eventually give us this attacking tetrahedral intermediate, then collapses, kicking off Cl minus. And then a Cl minus grabbing a proton. And don't let me describe with the Cl minus grabbing a proton first, and then I'll then we'll have the base buffer it. But just for a hypothetical situation, just let me draw it for my HCl. Alright, obviously we have an equivalent of amine around, so the amine's going to grab the HCl. But just for this hypothetical discussion, let me draw for my HCl. We know HCl is not going to lie around as bases here, but just let me draw HCl. Is that okay? Yeah. Should there be an H on the end? And that's what I was just discussing. Sorry. <laughs> Plus HCl. Because there was an H here, and that's the acidic thing. The chlorine takes it. We form HCl. Of course, there's a, we have the chlorine of amine around, so the amine's going to grab the proton. But we'll talk about that later. Just, I just want to do this pKa analysis. All right, I'll have the amine take it. Plus N R R H grabbing the proton from the HCl because obviously the amine is far and away can be the strongest base in the system. But what I want to talk about from the equilibrium standpoint is how we can say <coughs> where the equilibrium lies. So if you just look at the and as the reaction progresses, if you just look at what's attached to the starting material, HCl, pKa is not zero. All right. And now we have uh, an amine attached to it. Pk, what's the pKa of just a normal amine? So not an ammonium. What's just the pKa of an amine? Nine. What? Nine. Well, nine to ten, that's ammonium. The pKa of NH4, and ammonium is ten. What's the pKa of just a neutral amine with one proton going to the negatively charged one? Thirty-five. Thank you, thirty-five. Oh, thirty-five. Okay. So, in this case, what do we say? We say the stronger nucleophile the equilibrium is going, to, is going to favor the stronger nucleophile being part of the acyl group and the weaker nucleophile being kicked off the carbonyl and swimming around. So in this case, what this says is uh, weaker nucleophile is chlorine by pKa arguments 10 to the 36, right? So this, this equilibrium is going to way, way, way favor forming the amide, because the amide is such, such a better nucleophile. And so in theory, so after this happens, we have plus Cl minus. So when the amine grabs the, H, the proton from HCl, we have plus Cl minus. In theory, if Cl minus were to add into here and give us Cl, or acid chloride back, this would leave as a negatively charged amine. But what's going to happen? Well. When this leaves as an equally charged amine, when we have a really strong nucleophile around, it's just going to add in the acid chloride, right? So an acyl group with a good leaving group on it is not going to last very long 
in the presence of a good nucleophile. So this causes the equilibrium to be way shifted over to the atom. And we can basically predict the equilibrium constant to be the sum of the strong pKa minus the weak pKa, or in this case, the pKa of the acyl group in the product, which is amine 35, minus the pKa of the substitution of the acyl group in the starting material, which is sub-zero. I'll just say zero just because it's an easy calculation. So we would expect this equilibrium to favor the amide by 10 to the 35. But of course, and that's, that's what happens. That's exactly what happens. Uh, and then uh, some very intelligent people brought Friday that really to make this true, this, what would happen if you just use one equivalent of a mean for us? What would the maximum yield you get for this reaction if you just added one equivalent? If the addition of one thing of a mean adding in gives one equivalent of HCl, what's the maximum yield you get if you just do one equivalent of a mean? Half, 50%, right? So in order to have this reaction go to completion, you just can't add in one equivalent of a mean. You have to add in two of 